Start the meeting. At uh, 9 11 a.m. and thank you for your attendance. Uh, and do we have a leave of absence? Um, Councillor O'Neill. I'll move a, a leave of absence for Councillor Hancock as she's attending a funeral. Okay, do we have a second? Councillor McMullen. Uh, any opposition will go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Um, eight that's zero. eight zero. Okay. Um, moving on to confirmation of the meet, uh, minutes on the ordinary meeting of the 28th of June, 2023. Do we have a mover? Councillor McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'll move that the minutes of the ordinary meeting held on the 28th of June, 2023 be confirmed. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Taylor. Um, any uh, opposition will go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Okay, eight zero. Okay, moving on to the budget meeting of the 28th. Um, uh, through the chair, I think there's two sets of minutes. The Oh, yeah, you're, you're quite right. Page 49. Yep. Yes. No worries. Uh, budget meeting 28th of June 2023. Uh, we have a move by Councillor Taylor. I'd like to move that the minutes of the special budget meeting held on the 28th of June 2023 be confirmed. Do we have a seconder? Uh, Councillor McMullen. Uh, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 8 0. Okay, so if there's nothing else, we will move on to the agenda. Considerations for notice of motion, page 85. Raymond Landfield, lease, retire, manufacturing. Councillor McMullen. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to move that <coughs> Council amend resolution number 0M-03-2023-31 to read as follows. That Council 1 extend the current lease Approval for lot 241 on WA L53710 for tyre storage until 30th of June 2024 to allow set up for sub subsequent new site. To delegate the Chief Executive Officer or delegate to obtain any necessary approvals for both licence and the lease that may be required and execute any documents necessary. Can I just check? It should be. You said lease, it should be licence. Oh, sorry, current, current licensing, sorry. Mm. Councillor Ladbrook seconded that. You happy with that, Councillor Ladbrook? Yes. Okay, um, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Uh, or at all? Then we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. Uh, 10.1 um, rewards and recognition program. Uh, I would like to move that one acknowledge this report does not enact resolution OM slash 10.2022 slash 01. Um, and receive and note the report. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Ladbrook. Sorry, can you have a next change of wording on number yeah, one? Yeah, no, I, I said that it does not acknowledge that this, one, acknowledge that this does not enact resolution OM 10.2022 slash 01, because what I was asking for is a report on a different thing. This is more operational. Um, happy to have the operational um, do what they're doing, but the other one was a basically a barbecue that the directors would do for the staff, and that has not come back in the report um, to what I was looking for. So basically, there's things in here that are more operational, and, and that's um, the CEO's domain. And um, yeah. So uh, does anyone wish to speak? Then we'll go to the vote. <coughs> All those in favour? Can I ask a question? Please go ahead. Um, 
Can we get a copy of uh, resolution OM slash 10.2022 slash 01? It's not in the report. Yeah, I'm sure we can give that to you, but we'll go to the vote. All those we'll in favour? I'll move we lay it on the table until we receive that, that resolution. All those in favour? Of laying it on I'm the laying table. Laying it on the table. Till later today. Um, all those against? Yes, uh, I'm in favour of laying it on the table. Okay, so that's 7-1 seven seven one. till yep. later okay. in the meeting. Righto, moving on to, um, to uh, 92, 10.2 LGAQ Annual Conference Motion 2023. Do we have a mover? Can I ask a question? Please Can go ahead. Through you to the CEO. CEO, um, I see the ones that we have here, ABC. And D, was there any was there any appetite at all for to do something about insurance, um, or am I on a different wavelength? Uh, no, look through the chair. Um, it's up to councillors um, to su make suggestions in relation to insurance. Um, certainly, from a southwest rock perspective as well, is some aspects of what they're doing um, is a little bit broader than what we're doing around carbon. But you could propose something around insurance. Um, I'm just trying to think. The 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 aspect is really to think about. Okay, whatever motion you put up is going to have state significance. Um, the there certainly has been advocacy and, and deputations in relation to insurance from an interregional level. It's just what what would you like to say? Because I'm happy to well, work... And it, it might not be the right place. I don't know. I'm um, just well, actually asking. It, it, it just... There's nothing to stop you. It's if you think... Um, it's just about thinking whatever we put context to, it just has to have state significance. So it could be around the insurance premiums or That's around... Right better use of local government data. It could be any of those things. So there's nothing to stop you from it doing that. It's more about insurance mm -hmm. policy, uh, renewals as in... The cost the of them. Cost and of, yeah, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. We could do that. Um, can I just make a suggestion? We've got a meeting next Wednesday. Is it When are these due, Madam CEO? Because uh, maybe if um, Councillor Taylor wants to have another one for consideration... Uh, 9th of August, of August. Yeah. yeah. So maybe, um, maybe you could... We've got time to... And certainly you <coughs> could um, have your recommendation to include insurance and then we could work offline in relation to what that might look like. Could we do that? Did you want to move something, Councillor Taylor? Um, well, I'm happy to move. Do you want me to add it in here or not? Yeah, you could just put... Um, you could put E, insurance, yep. yep. I just have a question. Please go ahead. Um, you know, with the insurance, what's the um, process for local government for insurance? Is it a bulk? It is a bulk. Oh, yeah. we it is a bulk thing, isn't it? Yeah, so it's not a, just us have, going yeah. out chasing our own <coughs> insurance. No, well, he's on a different... Oh, Councillor yeah. Taylor's on a different wavelength. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm on... I'm right across the board. Yeah, yeah. 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 everybody. For, yeah. for people. For, yeah. Everybody. for, yeah. for, yeah. for, for everyone community. In Queensland. You know, yeah, you know the ones that are coming to us saying that they can't get flood insurance Sorry, because, no. or it's so this high and, yeah. and the premiums are too high. That's yeah. what I was more along the lines of. Yeah. But a lot of them have just shut down, haven't they? Just said no. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The, uh, the council, we have a mutual scheme um, which is sort of run through our local government association. Yeah, that's what I'm and um, but obviously councillor taylor's talking about the general like council's been hit with increased premiums through that as well so mm -hmm. this mm. is obviously people that cannot get in people it's doubled or tripled in price yeah, yeah. so yeah that's correct yeah. councillor taylor uh, so i'd like to move that council one endorse the submi submission of motions as attached to the officer's report regarding a banking practice b mobile black spot program C, renewable energy decommissioning bonds. D, amalgamation of assessments. And E, if this one fails, resource fees. Uh, can I make the suggestion yeah. that you do a three, not an E? Okay. A yeah. three, which would be uh, that council request officers develop an insurance 
a, 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 um, a relevant motion to do with increases in insurance premiums and advocacy required. Thank you. But you also need the number E. So I don't need E. You do need E. For what? Well, that's that's a different one altogether. That's if we can go back on the screen. Resource company obligations, payment of rates. That's too much. Is that e. someone else's? Well, that is was one that was there. Is that E? Yeah, I haven't finished yet. I no, no, no. But that was up there. Yeah, that was E. Yeah. 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 Relevant motion Sorry. for insurance. Mm -hmm. But it, it's just in there. It's just weird how it's in there. But it had an E before. Well, it's not waiting for someone whether someone's going to add it or not. I guess it's what. So the resource. We haven't got one worked up, have we? What's that? On the e. resource obligations. Yeah, it came no. through. Came through the other day. Oh, did it? Yeah, on Sunday night, I think it came through. Well. Oh. Yeah, it's there. Okay, I'll just. So that was, <coughs> that was E. Is that is that what you were aiming for? Do you want to just put insurance in there and just start? Oh, I'm going to do that in number three. No, I don't. Uh, resource company obligation at the payment of rates. Number two, invite the other regional councils to be co-sponsors and include the supporting organisations for respective motions as recommended. And three... Request officers develop an insurance... Uh, a relevant insurance resolution that addresses broader um, advocacy uh, to be considered at the next ordinary meeting. You want to put there about high insurance premiums? What What's your main angle with it? Yeah, it is. That's what it is. No, next, next week. Ordinary, the ne the next, next week. Ordinary. 9th of, of July. Yeah. 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 Or whatever the date yeah. is next week. Yeah. 9th yeah. of course. Yeah. Well, we also have a meeting next week. That's, that's what we're that's what I said, the next ordinary meeting. 19th of July. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, three request officers develop a relevant motion for insurance that addresses broader advocacy mm -hmm. at the next ordinary meeting. Mm -hmm. Is that all you need, yeah, CEO? Sure. Yeah. Right. And that'll capture it. It, it's broad enough to capture what Tyson, uh, the Mayor said about I'll take higher premiums. Mr. Mayor. Thank you. All right, we have a second now, Councillor McMullen. Uh, does uh, the move wish to speak to the motion? Um, no, not really. I think that sort of sums it up. If we can, you know, anything that helps would be great. <coughs> Thank you. Okay. okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Um, I, I will speak about that. I'll, obviously, um, we've got. You know, certainly some big issues as far as people being able to access loans equitably compared to uh, people uh, in capital city areas. Um, there's a double standard and it's affecting people being able to uh, get loans in our regional areas. Um, so as well as obviously we've got a mobile black spot We've still got a lot of um, black spots and we, we really in 2023 should not have them. Um, and in regards to energy, uh, with some of these renewable energy projects, um, we have to protect the community from if they do go into receivership, who removes all of the assets because the big concern is um, uh, there could be some major financial costs possibly in the future for landowners <coughs> that may not be aware of it. So that's something that I think the state certainly needs to deal with. Uh, and obviously there's a lot of um, um, problems with amalgamation of assessments and they are something that um, is being caused um, and I'm not really sure that the people doing it really uh, understand the the amount of upset that it's causing. Um, so we definitely and I'll fully support uh, high insurance premiums. That is something that is a very big issue for people where they are actually facing sometimes not being able to get insurance. Um, and then the second thing worse than not being able to get insurance is when it doubles or triples and you can't afford it. 
So that's a bigger issue that people may go uninsured in the future, which is a very bad situation for our community. So, yeah, I'll certainly be supporting all of these moving forward to the conference, the annual conference. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Councillor O'Neill. Yeah, thanks, Chair. Um, I'll, I'll support this uh, motion. I, I think it's incredibly important that we do, uh, uh, you know, use the the support of the local government uh, association, uh, the reputation that they have uh, in uh, government circles is very strong. And, and if we can uh, advocate the things that are impacting our residents, our community, uh, us as a council, I think it's important uh, that we get the support of um, our, our neighbouring and, and, and broader cousins of local government across the state. Uh, and, um, you know, I've seen motions that have gone to, to conference that have had enacted real change, legislative change. So um, I support this. I, I, won't, um, I won't add to the sentiments that you've already shared uh, in relation to the individual issues. They are all important to our community and um, um, thank you to the staff and in particular the CEO for putting these resolutions together. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? The I'll speak, um, please. Go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to just, uh, you know, support that, uh, you know, all the comments and just, uh, uh, you know, reiterate that, you know, all these things um, actually culminate into, you know, all other sorts of uh, things. For example, uh, banking practice, you know, it makes it a, you know, um, just got to understand that these things actually make uh, where we are a better, you know, a better place to live. Um, if we don't have good banking, you know, it's not a, it's not uh, the ideal situation. Uh, we need connectivity, absolutely. Support that um, renewable energy. Um, that's, uh, in my opinion, that's something that's very, very important. Um, amalgamation, as you said, you know, it's un misunderstood as to how this is uh, how this is uh, done, and then obviously the payment of rates as well, and also the insurance. That's a really, really big one. So um, I fully support uh, this, and uh, I think it's a great platform on which to uh, present these things. So I'll be supporting it. Yeah. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Does the move wish to sum up? No, thank you. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Mm -hmm. Yes. Eight zero. Uh, item 10.3, request for sponsorship, Queensland Young Auctioneers Competition. Uh, Councillor Ladbrook. Um, I'd like to move that Council provide in principle support um, for the sponsorship of the 2023 Queensland Young Auctioneers Competition to approve $4,000 for sponsorship of the 2023 Queensland Young Auctioneer Competition for from 0272-2200 sale yards operations and O and M sale yards as part of the 20 of the 23-24 um, budget and three endorse the use of the Roma sale yards logo as part of the event co-brand okay. co-branding. Do we have a seconder, Councillor mm -hmm. Burkett? Uh, any opposition? Yeah, can I just ask a question, just to clarify a question? Um, I've read here that it's going to be held at the ECA. We've had it at Rome the last couple of years. Is that correct that it's now gone back to the Brisbane Exhibition and we were just um, benefiting it for a short term? Uh, yes, that's correct. It's gone back for the ECA this year. I'm not sure of their plans for future, future years. If it was at the ECA... Previously, what previously we, we do have, um, I believe, four of our local uh, mm. agents in the finals, so um, we do have a reasonably <coughs> well representation. Councillor McMillan. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I, just, I think the it came out here with COVID. Just a COVID. With COVID, that, that's what when they yeah. Mm. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Does someone wish to speak to the motion? Yeah. Oh, I'm happy to support it, Mr. Mayor. I think it's good to see, in particular, we've got four local young young local auctioneers going to compete so that's i think it's really good cause yeah mm. yep. mm. mm. uh, does anyone else wish to speak 
I'll speak. Uh, we did have it out here and I, I do think it was uh, very successful. I do think in the future we should um, talk to um, this program and see if we can get it back to Roma. Um, so certainly happy to support it this year when we've got so many locals in it, but would like to see that they uh, would consider it um, in Roma because I think our ball selling ring is, is very good for the purpose um, and it's a great for the spectators that, that watched it. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Does the move wish to sum up? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 8 0. Ten point four request for financial assistance, Roma Show Society. Councillor Ladbrook. Um, I have a conflict. Um, item number ten point four description request for financial assistance, Roma Show Society. Um, declaring council is Councillor Ladbrook, and the person of interest, um, the related party is my wife Alana, which my wife is. President of the um, Roma Show Society, the type of conflict, declarable conflict of interest, and the action I'll take is leave the room while the matter is being discussed and voted on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other conflicts? Okay, so uh, 10.4, request for financial assistance, Roma Show Society. I'd like to move that Council 1 approve the request for financial assistance for the uh, accessible walkway design for 41 Arthur Street, Roma, that Brandon's and, Associate com Brandon and Associates completed for the Roma Show Society. And 2, acknowledge that the Brownie Hut is an existing council infrastructure and asset and that the building improvements should be carried uh, by council. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor uh, Guthrie. Um, I'll speak to the motion. I mean, this is a fantastic success story. Uh, I believe that it's a um, fantastic success story because um, Roma Show Society has gone and got um, grants to upgrade council buildings um, and normally the, the, the onus is on council to fund the depreciation. Um, so this is a wonderful um, situation where the Show Society have gone out and done that and improved council buildings so they will need less maintenance in the future. So anything that we can do to help um, and I believe that this was made uh, possible because of operating locally and having the support of a local director to actually have um, one way to make this happen because I don't believe in the past this may have even got up because it was too difficult to do it, whereas now it's been actually um, relatively hopefully easier to do and that is something that through the CEO and the staff have made it work where a non-for-profit has um, been doing work on council buildings and getting up to a great standard. So a great news story all round and when we're looking in the future at how do we maintain all of the council buildings in the region, this sort of model is a wonderful model that um, helps council maintain their buildings and keep them in good order. So does um, uh, anyone wish to speak against the motion I or for? Please go ahead. If you don't mind. Um, so this is just paying for the the planning of the thing. Who is actually doing the job? Um, the uh, I'm not sure about who the the builder will do in relation to the job, but um, the background is that uh, the group actually initially supplied us with plans as part of the development application process. But what actually ha happened was that our staff have asked for all, um, an upgrade to the accessibility to the building because it hits code, because of the amount of work they were actually doing to, to the whole building. 
and hence they had to go back to the um, the engineers and actually ask them for updated plans and that's what they're asking us for, that support to pay for the update, not the whole plan. Yeah, I understand that, but then they've got the plan, so who actually does the work? Like, is that, is council... Oh, no, they, 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 they will they manage the project. They'll they'll manage the project because they'll it's incorporated it. as part of the the balance of the project. Okay, thank yep. you. Yeah, uh, okay, Councillor McMullen. Mr. I, <coughs> I, I think it's just been answered that... The mo this money is for the plans, yeah. and I would assume yeah. then they're going to start looking at grants or wherever, you know, to, to get the money to do the upgrades. It does mention that. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and um, through the chair, I think it's just a probably something that we've got to get better at informing our our groups. Is um, they had a small problem, they applied for a grant, um, thinking that they would fix all of the problem. Eventually what happened was because um, it's a relatively small building, the amount of work they needed to be done actually hit, triggered a development application process and hence code um, which hadn't previously been applied to the building and so that they needed to meet these accessibility requirements and a few others um, which they were able to fund. It was just this part of um, the process that they um, you know, haven't been able to fund and they come back to us. Uh, Councillor Burke. Yeah, I'll speak to the motion. I think it's, uh, it's one of those situations where it um, fits both situ uh, for both organisations. I think uh, it's a great uh, thing that the Roma Show Society's got a base and also takes a problem we had on our hands that if it was left vacant, it would slowly deteriorate, which would be a shame because it's a, it's a bit of an historical asset. So I think it's great and, and it's also good that they're um, looking forward to get, doing more work to it and make it an even better project. So... No, take me out of the Rama show and also to the council staff. Okay, does anyone else wish I'll, to speak? I'll speak for it. Um, Please go ahead. Um, yeah, I fully endorse uh, um, the mayor's comments and council workers. Um, it certainly does protect these things. They they're able to be uh, done up, um, and it's a good uh, template for you know for the future. Uh, the one thing I you know. Um, one thing I do love about it is the fact that it's looking after our heritage, um, you know, uh, for as long as I can remember. The, um, yeah, um, those uh, huts have uh, always been a significant part of the community. They uh, stand out there. So uh, I just think it's uh, wonderful to see an organisation like this, a not-for-profit, doing this. And uh, um, it just shows, us, um, just shows what can be done if, uh, if we try. I'll be supporting it. Thank you. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Uh, then I'll sum up. Uh, yeah, and as uh, people have said, uh, just for the community's benefit, I believe that they've re-roofed re uh, uh, one of the huts, uh, new stumps, all um, paid for by Excuse Greens. Excuse me. Uh, is... Sorry, Chair. Um, I, I have to leave. Um, right. Thank so, sorry, you. So, so, sorry to interrupt. No problem at all. Uh, yeah, so, um, and uh, this has been done at a much reduced cost than what um, the sort of costings that I see come across our desk here. Um, so, you know, paying for um, a small amount of design for some extra work that um, needs to be done uh, is a very small thing. But the general concept is fantastic. And if we can encourage this and reduce the red tape in the future, uh, we can have more council assets improved um, without um, having to put the onus on the ratepayers. Okay, now we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Uh, that's six, seven zero. Okay. Six, uh, six, six zero. That's six, right. That's Councillor right. yeah, uh, Ladbrook's Ladbrook. out of the room. Yep. Thank you. Seven point one annual valuation consultation for the Maranoa region. I'd like to move that council uh, request um, that evaluation is not uh, uh, needed in the Maranoa uh, this uh, for the next valuation period. There's options on the screen. Um, whereabouts?
Oh, yeah. Top one's yours, Mr. Your intention, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Righto, so I'll use that wording. Um, that council responded to the Department of Resources stating council's wishes are that there is no need for evaluation for the region as part of the 2024 revaluation re program, which will take effect on the 30th of June, 2024. <coughs> we have a second of Councillor Burkett. I have a question. Please go ahead. Just in the um, executive summary here, it says uh, Department of Resources seeking council's opinion. They don't ever take any notice of it, though, no. do they? No. Well, we no, do have a new no. value of general. Sorry? We do have a new value of general, so you never know. There might be a change, but it, yeah, but it hasn't worked in the past. It's up to them, isn't it, usually? Yeah. yeah. They just seek our opinion from yeah. the councils, and then they make their own. Just be polite. But hopefully um, we did have one last year, so. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone wish to speak for the motion? I'll speak for the motion. Oh, I think our, our rate... Um, Ratepayers have been through quite enough with valuations. Um, I think we've got a declining market uh, generally, um, and I think it um, it does not need anything more because it seems to be amazing how valuations sometimes go against the grain of what the general sentiment is. So I don't think it's in the ratepayers' interest to to get this revalued or council's interest. Okay, does someone wish to speak against the motion? Or for the motion? Okay, then we're gonna to go to the vote. Oh, sorry, please go ahead. Uh, I'm gonna, um, I'm speaking in favour of this. Um, and I know historically I have advocated very strongly uh, that we provide uh, no opinion for the uh, reasons that have already been asked uh, by Councillor Taylor and the fact that uh, it's it's largely fallen on deaf ears. Um, I do think that, that the fact that there has been a change to the value of general, uh, that uh, there is a new set of eyes on this and that we should advocate that there is not a um, <coughs> evaluation undertaken this year for the reasons we all know that there have been significant increases in um, valuations, um, particularly for rural, uh, and given that there is a new person in the chair, uh, then I, I am uh, in favour of us advocating this year not uh, to uh, see a valuation occur or next year. Okay, uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Then we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Uh, seven zero. Uh, 11.2, a uh, recommendation to procure one maintenance grader. Uh, do we have a mover, Council McMullen? Mr Mayor, I'll move that Council one select Hastings Deering Australia as the recommended supplier of one Caterpillar 140 grader for the amount of $534,500 excluding GST plus maintenance servicing contract $26,408 plus trade back options of $268,000 at 5,000 hours, excluding GST, excluding registration and CTP insurance. To authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to enter into final negotiations with Hastings Deering Australia Limited and raise the purchase order if the final terms are acceptable. Okay, we have a second at Councillor Ladbrook. Um, does anyone wish to speak to it? Uh, I'll speak to it. Um, one of the benefits of uh, operating locally and um, being able to do um, some rates freezes for different categories, uh, getting more efficient uh, in our operations. Some of the feedback that I've had is that driving old gear is um, not efficient. We had councils that were much less financially able than ourselves and they, most of them always tipped their machines out um, early to get the high uh, resale value and obviously it's not spending any money on the machines except for servicing. Um, so this is another, if this goes through, I'll be supporting this because this will be another grader that we will be uh, turning over with um, hopefully 
that we will get it back at 5,000 hours, be able to get very good money and, and tip it out and get another one. So this is better um, for the staff that are listening. It's um, better gear for staff to operate. Um, and uh, I'm certainly not someone that supports council having ageing um, uh, plant. And, um, um, and also uh, the feedback that I've had is that the older plant has a lot of breakdowns and council doesn't really see the loss in productivity, which is many thousands of dollars a day um, if we have that. So I'll certainly be supporting uh, purchasing uh, uh, a new grader to add to the many graders that we um, have purchased through this chamber lately. Does anyone else wish to speak? Does the move wish to sum up? No, thank you. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 7-0. <coughs> uh, Uh, Eleven point three Riversley Road access naming of unnamed section of road. Councillor Burkett. I'd like to move the council endorse the road name for the unnamed section of, of road off Riversley Road as Main Road Easement Two. We have a second to Council McMullen. Does the move wish to speak to the motion? Yes, Mr. Mayor. I think it's pretty fitting by the, reading the report that the um, it's named after Cam Ferrier's father. Like this, it shows the historical. Uh, touch to it, I suppose. It's been in the family for 118 years, and it's through their property. I think it's, it's very fitting and, um, yeah, happy to support it. OK, does anyone else wish to speak? Councillor McMullen. Yeah, I'd just like to <coughs> thank both Director Matt and Deputy Director Cameron Hoffman for putting the time in on this. Um, it's been, a, 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 oh, well, I'm not going on for a little while, but it was raised some time ago. This particular section of road was always on the road register but somehow in early in the new amalgamation it was dropped off and uh, there were some very long and discussions about trying to put things back in where they should be but it's far more economical to leave the road where it is and try and put it back on the alignment. Okay, uh, I'll speak. Um, I'd like to congratulate the Wuru Director, uh, Director Matt, uh, thank you for all the work that you've put in with this and obviously the Deputy Director. Um, you know, one of the positive things for people of the Maranoa is in the past we would have, uh, from my uh, memory, sort of either not said yes to some of this or we would have, um, it would have been a big debate in the Chamber. Now it is actually just happening. Um, <coughs> We're actually more efficient, um, finding different ways to do maintenance. And obviously this is not a, a big amount of maintenance, but we can handle it, this in the schedule. So uh, these sorts of things, um, and as far as I know, it's um, been going on for a couple of years. Uh, when the directors um, got hold of it, because there was a report done up in the deputy director, it's actually happened. So if this goes through, this is another issue that we're solving for the residents of the Marina, and in this case, Waru. So congratulations to the staff. And instead of talking about it and saying no, we're actually doing it. Okay, does uh, anyone else wish to speak? Does the move wish to sum up? No, thanks, Mr. Mayor. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? 7-0. Thanks, Council. Thank you. It should be page one forty seven. Thank you. Sure, no problem. Well, I'll just read it out first. Eleven point four tender two three zero three two register of pre qualified. Supplies for wet hire of equipment. Councillor Guthrie. Um, I'd like to declare a conflict for 11, agenda item 11.4, tender 230232, sorry, I'll start again. Tender 230332, register of pre qualified supplies for wet hire of equipment. 
The declaring councillor is myself, Councillor Julie Guthrie. The person with the interest is myself. And the particulars of the interest is that Ivor Creevey is referred to in the agenda item as a potential tenderer. And he's actually a neighbour of mine and lives on an adjoining rural property. The type of conflict would be declarable conflict of interest. And the action that I'm going to propose is, although I have a reasonable conflict of interest, I do not believe a reasonable person, sorry, although I have a declarable conflict of interest, I do not believe a reasonable person could have the perception of bias. Therefore, I will choose to remain in the meeting. However, I will respect the decision of the meeting on whether I can remain and participate in the decision. Okay, Councillor Taylor. Um, I'd like to move that into the public interest of Councillor Guthrie's participation based on agenda item 11.4. Because a reasonable person would trust that the decision is made in the public interest. Uh, we have a second to Councillor O'Neill. Um, any opposition? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Okay, six. Mr. Mayor, I left the. Sorry? Yep. I left the Six declare. zero, I, it was. I didn't read this properly, I apologise. I left to declare similar to Councillor Taylor. Mr. Mayor. Councillor Guthrie. Councillor Guthrie. Guthrie, sorry. Then, therefore, the uh, de deputy mayor can't have voted on that last. No. So that, that, so do you want to that take another? numbers were wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, oh. so let's do it again. All those in favour of the last motion? Okay, so that's uh, five, five zero. zero. Um, okay, Councillor McMullen. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, I'll move a conflict. The description is tendered. That's not really the item number. I know, but it's... 11.4. It's not a tender, though, is it? Well, it's what the yeah. title is. Yeah, the, the, the item is. Yes. Yeah. Same as Councillor Guthrie. Just read off the... The description is the subject heading. Yeah, I realise that, but we're not going out. This has nothing to do with tenders. This is only forming a panel. Sorry. That's it's a tender, but just for pre-qualified supplies, so we're not actually issuing any um, purchase orders or contracts or anything like that. It's just for them to go onto the register of pre-qualified supplies. Yeah. yeah, again, yeah. No, no monetary decisions no, on this. No, no that's no. what I was getting at. No. Yeah, adding them to the register. That's yeah. why I didn't think it'd be cool. Anyway, tender 23032, <laughs> register of pre-qualified <laughs> suppliers for wet hire of equipment. Councillor is myself, Councillor McMullen. Person with interest, myself. Um, Roma Earth Moving. Yeah, uh, Roma Earth Moving are my neighbours, and uh, they're mentioned in the list of um, registered suppliers. Um, it's a declarable conflict of interest. Although I have a declarable conflict of interest, I do not believe a reasonable person could have a perception of bias, therefore I will choose to remain in the meeting. However, I will respect the decision of the meeting on whether I can remain and participate in the decision. Oh. Councillor Taylor. Uh, I'd like to move that into the public interest of Councillor McMullen participation based on agenda item 11.4 because a reasonable person would trust that the decision is made in the public interest. Uh, we have a second of Councillor O'Neill. Uh, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Uh, five zero. <coughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so we've done tender 23032, <coughs> register of pre qualified suppliers for wet hire of equipment. Do we have a mover? Councillor O'Neill. I'll move that Council 1 approve the addition of supplies to the Register of Pre-Qualified Suppliers for wet hire of equipment established in accordance with Section 232 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, as listed below and under the proposed sub-panels listed in this report. Two, approve that pre-qualification for the mentioned businesses remain current until the 30th of November 2023. Three, authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to enter into a deed of agreement with the selected tenderers, formalising the terms and conditions detailed in the draft agreement. Tenderer's name uh, is a Buy, Byford Projects Proprietary Limited, Next Gen Final Trim Proprietary Limited, and Ivor Creevy. Right, have a second. Mr. Mayor. Let's go. He's read somehow he's going to read the lot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's, no, they're existing. These are only the ones that are being added. That's what I thought. It's been added. 
Yeah. All the oh, others okay. are on there. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, never mind. Okay. So do we have a seconder? Councillor Ladbrook. Um, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Does the mover wish to speak? No, thank you. Right. We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Seven zero. Right. Moving on. One sixty-five, sir. Eleven point five. Thank you. Uh, Eleven point five. Tender two three zero three five. Register of pre-qualified suppliers for vegetation management, including ground maintenance. Do we have any conflicts? Mr Mayor, I'll move that Council <coughs> one, a, a, the Council one approve the addition of new suppliers to the register of pre-qualified suppliers for vegetation management services, including grounds maintenance, being in accordance with S232 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, with businesses registered under the proposed sub-panels below. Uh, to approve the pre-qualification of the businesses on the register remain current until the end of 31st of March 2024. Three, authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to enter into a deed of agreement with the selected tenders, tenderers, formalising the terms and conditions detailed in the draft agreement. Urban public spaces, major facilities. One, the Vegetation Specialist Proprietary Limited. Rural herbicide spraying, the Vegetation Specialist Petritri Limited, Special Arbor, Arbor, Arbor Cultural Services, Qualified Arborists, the Vegetation Specialist Petritri Limited, Tree Lopping, the Vege Vegetation Specialist Petritri Limited, Minor Vegetation and Management, the Vegetation Specialist Petritri Limited. Okay, do we have a seconder? No. Councillor Guthrie, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? Then we're no. Going, we're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? 7 0. Okay, uh, tender 23036, register of pre-qualified suppliers for traffic management services. I've got a question on this one. Uh, I note that one, um, one person or one was not compliant or something. Um, are they local? Uh, Which one would that be? Uh, the non uh, non con non assess non conforming southwest traffic management they um, hmm. so they're from St George right I'll try and, but they're also based in Emerald but they're not local no right. but they've told me that they were going to become local yeah. and I haven't had any more communication from them about um, becoming local yeah, right. they're a, yeah so they just we've asked i think we asked them three times to fill in the tender forms and they just kept sending us um schedule of rates yep. so it's been a bit frustrating trying to get them to do the right thing yeah right and state development would help them with that yes yes i actually had a meeting with not with that person but her father yep. and another another um person and discussed what needed to be done with a few few um panels for them. Um, it's all related to Indigenous um, companies and that. Um, yeah, so, you know, we've had, we've tried to be as helpful as we can to this state for them. Okay, thank you. Please go ahead. Yeah. They're uh, employees. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah. So what we do is we try and get a, a snapshot in time of the, the skills and qualification yeah. of employees, and because they change over time, it's yeah, just. We just get enough of this, the actual company or the actual yeah. employee. Yeah. yeah. Councillor I'm happy to move. Please go ahead. Well, I'll move that it's oh, that it is recommended that Council One approve the addition to Council's Traffic Management Services Register, established in accordance with S232 of the Local Government Regulation 2012. Two, approve the pre-qualification of the business on the register remain current until the end. Sorry of Sorry to third. interrupt. Um, I've just re rejoined the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. We're on um, 11.6 Tender 23036. Please go ahead, Councillor. Of the 31st of March 2024, three, authorise the Chief Executive Officer or Delegate to enter into a deed of agreement with the selected tenderers, formalising the terms and conditions detailed in the draft agreement. Tenderers name, traffic management, star rating zero. Uh, Verifact, star rating of zero. That is all good. Do we, is, uh, so you, you mentioned the two that are yep. going on there. Yep. So. Okay. Councillor Ladbrook seconds it. Uh, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 8-0. Okay, moving on. 12.1, Yulbar Fire Tower, Queensland Heritage Register. Do we have a mover? I've got a question. Please go ahead. Uh, through the chair uh, to um, Pam, what what is the the broader impact of having it registered? Uh, you know, I understand that the the top part of it has been removed, and so where we, we've got a, a resolution on the books that we're going to construct it as per the request of the local community at a at a lower level than what it historically was. Is there broader implications to being able to do things into the future to it if we um, have, see it registered as a, as a heritage asset? Yep. Um, through you, Mr Chair, it's, um, it's a really good question and one that we've sort of, we were batting around when we were discussing this topic. So the, um, the recommendations to, to try and um, allow a little bit more flexibility in a, in a positive way when we um, when we go to build this. Like, if we try and um, make amendments to this building, it's it's likely to be need to be brought up to, to the current BCA code, and it'll it'll be a shadow of itself to meet current mm. current code. So, in this instance, we see it probably as a positive, and will give council some flexibility to maintain it, its heritage rather than having to like oh, maintain the steps and upgrade it to the current BCA, you'd um, look away, you, yeah. you'll actually take, take potentially could take it away. So it's just trying to strengthen its... So by it, having the heritage listed, uh, listing on it, it um, mitigates having to do um, certain improvements uh, for accessibility, et cetera. Correct, and yeah. And you keep the, the look and the feel of it. Yeah, okay. yeah. and I've heard that a few... I've heard a few comments say, um, well, you, you can't do maintenance on heritage buildings. Um, that I don't sort of agree with that. Um, maintenance is more more difficult, but just because something's difficult doesn't mean yeah. you can't do it. It just, and it's, it, it's built into the fact that you're trying to protect the heritage. So yes, there will be more guidelines on what paint you can use and what colors you can use and that. But so, yeah. but um, th that's the idea of it. It's to protect the, the heritage. So. That, that's it, yeah. I know there was concerns about, oh, heritage buildings are, are difficult to maintain, but it's because they're trying to preserve the heritage is what, why they aren't just your cookie cutter. They are a bit more difficult, but um, so, yeah. But, but that's that's the broader idea here is it's, it's actually to try and help us maintain the authenticity of it if we are going to be doing work on it. What generally happens is you, you need to engage with a specialist that works in that industry and like timber restoration are the perfect people for fire towers so they can more give instruction to how you can restore it without having to meet every single part of the QBSA. It's not dodging it, it's actually just trying to preserve the heritage of that otherwise to bring it up to standard, it, it, yeah, it you might. That. No, yeah. That's very clear, yeah. thank you. No, yep. I'm, I'm happy to move then. 
that council one in accordance with the 2024-25 capital. 23. Just the yes, we've just amended that because the um, dates oh, were wrong. Right oh right, okay. Yes, yep. good point. That's way ahead. Excellent. Uh, that council one in accordance with the 2324 capital project budget <coughs> carry out remediation works to relocate the fire tower cabin to Cobbin Co Park with the final location to be determined in consultation with Yulebar Development Group. Two, submit an application for Yulebar fire tower cabin to be added to the Queensland Heritage Register. Three, write to the Minister of Environment and the Great Barrier Reef and Minister for Science and Youth Affairs, me, Megan Scanlon, MP, to advocate for the Yulebar Fire Tower Cabins addition to the Queensland Heritage Register. We have a second. I'm happy to second it. We just need to amend three um, because the Minister for Environment uh, and Great Barrier Reef and Minister for Science and now Minister for Multicultural Affairs is Leanne um, Enoch um, Linard L-I-N-A-R-D So is it the same actual title? Um, the same no, you So you have youth. to add one you have to add one Multicultural you didn't say youth though, did you? It's not youth anymore but um, the director's just given me a Look, so I just got to make sure I was right. <laughs> yeah, Leanne Linard, I think is how you pronounce it, is the Minister for Environment and the Great Barrier Reef, Minister for Science and Minister for Multicultural Affairs. Mm -hmm. You're happy with that, Deputy Director? Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. My apologies for that. I, yeah, we researched that, but something's gone. Something's I think changed it's just there. In the last little reshuffle that happened, yeah. Excellent. Yep. Fast right, I'll, 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 I'll read that one again. Then, right, three, right to the Minister for Environment and the Great Barrier Reef, and the Minister for Science, Multicultural Affairs, Leanne Linard, MP, to advocate for the Yulebar Fire Tower Cabins, addition to the Queensland Heritage Register. Okay, we had a seconder in Councillor O'Neill, I believe. Yep. Uh, does um, uh, anybody wish to speak to this project? Councillor Burke. Yeah, Mr Mayor, I think this is uh, a, a great move forward to the uh, getting slowly getting to the Yulebar Master Plan and there's been a lot of work from Deputy Director and his, and his, um, his crew and I think the um, Yulebar Development Group will be pretty pleased to see this coming, starting to come to fruition and I look forward to um, see it up in in place. Um, okay, do we have anyone else that wishes to speak to it? Uh, I'll speak to it. Um, I think we definitely need to, uh, the feedback that I get from residents is we need to save our history. So if it is a way to save it, I don't believe that um, being on a heritage register is a problem. It just means that you just don't go out there and and do everything with modern building uh, materials. So as long as you're a bit common sense, I think um, they certainly don't want heritage items to fall down and fall because of lack of maintenance. So <coughs> I'm sure there's just a different way of doing it. And once you get on the program, it'll be pretty easy. So we're pretty <coughs> lucky we've got uh, some pretty good timber specialists that are involved, I think, with this project and yeah, look forward to it uh, being saved for the community of the timber town of uh, Yulebar. Okay, does anyone else wish to... I'll say please? something. Please go ahead. Yeah, I'll just say, yeah, um, yeah. as as, as before, um, in my opinion, yeah, very important to preserve heritage and history and uh, in line with um, various other things around the, around the Maranoa um, and, uh, you know, within people's locality, um, they, you know, um, I for one just love to see things like that preserved. Pretty, they chopped the legs off it years ago, but anyway, that's uh, that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. We've still got we've still got the cabin, so uh, so fully support it. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak, okay. Councillor Ladbrook? Yeah, I think it's good to um, get uh, things like that heritage listed, and they keep um, they're kept in the way they should be. 
Um, and actually, my shop is actually heritage listed, and <coughs> I have never had a problem with um, anything to do with the um, heritage, Bob. Mm. Okay. Does no one else wish Councillor O'Neill? Oh, I will. Um, well, we really honed in on the heritage register. I hope it's not because I asked the question as whether it should go on it. Um, the answer that the deputy director made it very clear that it is a good thing. Uh, and um, I, I think we should ask those questions to make sure it is a, a positive outcome for the actions that we're going to take as a council. Um, all credit to uh, the work that's happening by, um, you know, the very dedicated volunteers from the Yulebar community that want to see this project come to fruition. Uh, it is a couple of years in the making. Uh, they have stuck with it and uh, this is another step in the right direction and I can't wait to see it open uh, and um, it become a, a tourism asset for, for people to um, you know drop in and, and, and uh, pull up the caravans and stay a night in Yule Bar. So um, well done to the team and, and look forward to it happening. Okay, um, then we're gonna go to the vote if no one else wishes to speak. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero twelve point two Roma pool maintenance and disability toilet update. Do we have a mover? Councillor O'Neill. I'll move the council one acknowledge the report in Acts Resolution Number um, OM slash zero eight dot two zero two two slash five seven. Two notes maintenance done in the last financial year and scheduled, and three notes of feasibility and costs associated with installation of a unisex disability toilet cubicle. Can I ask a question, please? Yes, and then Councillor Ladbrook. Um, I don't have a problem. I mean, this is a reasonable um, request and there's a lot of work gone into it and I don't doubt the need for a unisex disability toilet, et cetera. But I'm just wondering, has it been considered or has it been looked at when we're talking about um, feasibility of a demountable toilet block to be placed there because I'm mindful of the time frame of the new pool and also down the track being able to reuse. I'm just questioning, has has consideration been given to possibly a demountable disability toilet rather than this proposal, which is to spend $55,000 on a improvement that will have reasonably limited duration. Do you know where I'm going? Mm. Mm. And in answering that, can I just... Sure. Uh, I, I haven't moved that we do anything. Yeah. So just that, that resolution does not say that we're about to do uh, and spend $55,000. I know. So we're very clear. But yeah. it's noting it, but I'm just wondering whether as so part of this report... I've noted the feasibility. I haven't I haven't moved that we do it, though, just so, so yeah. we're clear. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I still ask the question, though? Um, sh sure, Councillor. So, y yes, the, the, the notion around... The report that's written today was a factual one about mm. could a disability toilet be put in there and that was the cost with no recommendation whether we should or shouldn't proceed. Mm -hmm. um, and noting the um, uh, the briefing in relation to the pool redevelopment, so obviously that's all in the mix mm. ab about if you were to decide to want to proceed further in relation to that. Um, with respect then to your question about a disability, uh, sorry, a demountable style. Um, in the in the recent, um, when we went to the site and had a look at that, that wasn't necessarily something that we took into account. But I but I was of the understanding that it had been previously considered. But I'm happy to go away and have it and find out more detail in relation to that type because I I understand the fundamentals, which is essentially that. Uh, any money you spend in relation to this building at some point in the future, in 12 or 18 months' time, will be demolished. Um, as opposed to bringing in some sort of temporary building that could be hired, leased or whatever and moved on at another time. So can I make a suggestion to the mover or can I maybe pose an additional point there? <coughs> and I note that you are noting the, the uh, feasibility can we go maybe, or would you consider having number four to investigate the costs associated with or the feasibility of a... Um, demandable. Demandable uh, unisex... I think the cost is better than feasibility, but the cost associated with yeah. a demandable 
or all abilities toilet. Yeah, so it's giving an extra bit of an, an angle yeah. that we're noting all of this, but we, can we also consider something okay, else? Well, we do as have, part I of think, it. a couple of questions here. I'm, right. I'm happy as the mover to include that point four. Yep. That's right, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just well, no, okay. Councillor Labrooks first, um, and then just to ask um, how um, desperate are we? Because if we're going to spend that money, um, to me, <coughs> if um, they can get by with for now, is it a really urgent thing that needs doing? Or what triggered it? To... You know what I mean? Like it's been there for that long, and then all of a sudden, we've got to have these toilets. Um, do we need them? I know I'm not being disrespectful to anyone, but we've got by now. The pool, new pool's going to, you know, and we're going to spend 55 grand. You might as well flush it, really. Because it's just a waste. Mr. Mayor, the resolution is not to do it. Yeah, it's the resolution is not to go mm. and spend $55,000. Uh, it's noting the report. So what? Why is it there then? Mr. Mayor, I was going to. Um, now the report will probably tell us this eventually, but um, I think it'll cost more than fifty-five thousand to put a demountable in there because I mean you've got to find the sewage main. I'm not one hundred percent sure it is, but um, the other question we've got a couple of residents. One lady in particular had some both knees now, I think. But anyway, we're having trouble using the we use the pool fairly regular, but we're having trouble using the toilets because of their re on, during their rehabilitation. I suppose is the word I should be saying and things like that. We, we did in relation to um, – there has been some modification. In the women's area, we did modify a toilet, um, um, one of the toilets to include handrail and a higher um, seat yeah. for potentially for people who have got the rehab requirements for, for seating. So that, that component has been undertaken, but it doesn't necessarily address uh, uh, all users and it, and it is restricted to the women's. Um, toilet area. So, do we have uh, uh, what request did uh, drove this? How many how many CRs that we got, or whoever put the report up in the beginning? Uh, Can you say? Yeah, please go ahead. So it was Councillor Hancock, and she rang me this morning because she wasn't going to be here. Yeah, her um, report triggered this. Yes, um, and it was a customer request. She did say to me, and I wasn't aware, and, and she mustn't have been either, about just having an elevated toilet with the handrails will go some way to, um, you know, uh, uh, address the concerns that were raised. And so um, I, I think that that captures it. Um, if, if you're honing in on what the original concern was that was raised by a community member to Councillor Hancock. Just, uh, um, just to more to follow on from that, what uh, Director Dean said, raising that and also you could probably I'm not sure exactly what cubicle you did that you you might be able to retrofit uh, a wall like a module wall out a bit to make room if it is but raising it will do that but with the demountable if there's if there's a vent pipe on the outside wall it's not a big job to hook it demountable it'll be only the rent cost or the lease but if that's fixed that well that's That'll tie us but I'm, I'm happy to include that we um, yeah. understand what those costs are for a, a demand. So, uh, uh, Director, um, obviously, you know, there's not too much to a uh, toilet as far as the, you know, the petition and that. Is there any ability to be able to just, like what you did, but move them out or do one with a bit bigger or if is you there need any to put a wheelchair in there. Yeah. Is there any options because it could be three or four years before people get the disabled toilet or whatever, but there's there might be some middle ground that's not forty, fifty five thousand. Have you got any uh, thoughts on that? Um uh, other than to the extent to say that I'm happy to explore that a bit further. Around. We, we did inspect both of the areas and along the lines of sacrificing two of the cubicles into one and that type of thing. But I'm, I'm happy to go away and do some more work in relation to that. Because it seems a lot of money if it's just petitioning or something that we might be able to do. Or like what you've done is fantastic. Maybe that needs to be done. In both, more, yeah. You know, it, to have an option. Councillor McMullen. Mr. Mayor, I think the... the 
part we're missing here, not missing, is this will be the unisex. If we're going to do one in the women's on its own, we're going to have to do one in the men's. This will be unisex, unisex. outside. Well, not outside, but separate, separate from the two. Yeah. Mm. So while it might sound a little bit of money if we start doing one in each of the cubic, um, extending cubicles in each of the two separate facilities, it might run into a lot more money. Yeah, but it might be, if you find the right you know, builder or handyman, it might be only a very small amount of money to be a bit more flexible. Or does the person that put the CR want completely not in the men's, not in the ladies, they want just a bigger one? You haven't seen that CR? Oh, Mayor, it, uh, in, in all fairness, the, the report is we should have come to council sooner than this because it has been on the books for a little while. Um, so I'm not saying that I did haven't seen the CR, but it it was it like it was last year, and so I'll just uh, amend for investigate the costs associated with associated with insulation of the demandable toilet, and the costs associated with retrofitting um, uh, uh, cubicles within both the male and female uh, amenities uh, to make them all abilities access. There's actually a storeroom there. Did they use that? Oh, what, sorry? A storeroom. Store yeah, but you got to... It's concrete floor. You'd have to dig it all up and run pipes. That's going to be the same. Right. So, so it's a oh, second. Uh, we're happy with that. Dollar. We haven't got one. That's right. Yeah. I'm happy to second that. Um, does the move wish to speak to it? I do. Um, I, I think it's... Uh, it's uh, One, thank you to the staff for bringing it back. Um, uh, I know Councillor Hancock would want to talk to her today if, um, if she wasn't away. Uh, at the at the funeral, um, uh, so uh, whilst um, it has taken a little bit of time to come back, I still think it's important for council to consider. But we need to consider it in the broader um, uh, understanding that we are looking at a major redevelopment at that site, uh, and uh, what is the cost benefit to our ratepayer and our community in uh, fixing a problem today that may, if we are successful, and we've, we've, we've got to uh, aim towards being successful with the Commonwealth grant that would see um, the reconstruction happen within the next 18 months to two years. Uh, and so uh, on that basis, um, I think uh, we should, uh, happy to include that we look at what the costs are with the um, you know, points that have been raised today. Uh, but again, we should consider that in the broader light of um, what the uh, the overall improvements um, are planned for this particular asset for the community. Okay, does someone else wish to speak? Uh, I'll speak. I'm supporting this because it's got that point four in it where we investigate. I believe there's always a low cost way around a problem. It may be the um, demandable, um, which could be reused. But I do believe there's always something we can do. From my experience, I think it would be probably more like three or four years before people will get that disability toilet if council does find the funding. Uh, these are big projects that take a long time to do and you've obviously have to have find builders that uh, have in their schedule in future to start that project. So that's at least probably 12 months, two years away before that be ready. So I, I really think it's three or four years before it's finished, not started. So I do think that um, it's about what we can do um, rather than just saying um, it will not, um, we're better off to wait because that's a long time. Um, so, okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Does the move wish I'll to I'll just start? say something. Oh, please go. Sorry, I'll just, just Edwards. yeah. Yeah, no, it's been a good debate on this one um, and uh, good contributions uh, from from uh, on the floor there. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I just think it's, um, uh, you know, the fact that it was brought up, uh, you know, about sa saving money, I think that's uh, very important, um, especially in light of what is going uh, happening going forward with, with this particular thing. If it wasn't, if the... Uh, New pool wasn't, you know, coming uh, coming. Well, then you'd obviously look at it in a different light. But um, but looking in that light uh, certainly certainly um, changes it. And you know, 
if we can save money on anything, I'm I'm all in favour of it. Um, but not not at the detriment of 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 the community, of course. Thank you. Okay. Does anyone else wish to speak? Does the move wish to sum up? I need to say that. Um uh, in part, the uh, original concerns that were raised have been addressed uh, by having a, a higher a toilet. Uh, well, it, the, the issues that was raised by um, to Councillor Hancock has been addressed. There may be others, uh, Deputy Mayor, but uh, having a higher toilet and having the, um, uh, the rails put in place, if there's more that we can do, then look forward to that coming back. Okay, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. Okay, thank you. Uh, Fourteen point one, Brisbane Olympics twenty thirty two draft analyst report. Do we have a mover? Can I ask a question? Please go ahead. Just um, and it's it's um, uh, remiss of me because I I don't access the papers uh, electronically, but the the two reports that are referenced just have a link. Are they that big that they can't be provided? Um, they, they were supposed to be provided. They were provided to be attached because, again, links are fine in the report, right? It's just recognising you need um, to look at something. Um, they're actually... They are quite large, but they're really in a PowerPoint format okay. and they can be distributed. Um, they were supposed to be attached to the report and happy to get well, them circulated. Well, I'll move that we lay this on the table to later in the meeting yep. to, to get those... Uh, Councillor O'Neill, when did you, if this gets up and we're holding a briefing anyway, and we're not making a decision, do you still want to lay it on the table when when that's going to go to a briefing anyway? Let me and see we're going now to get it? what I've got. Um, you have it at the. What we're just receiving briefing. and noting the report, and, and uh, are others in the same boat as I? Holding a briefing. We're holding a briefing to look at it. Yes, I understand detail. that, but we're the. Well, I'll, I, well, okay. I'll I'll move something then. I'll yep. I'll move the council one acknowledge this report in Acts Resolution OM slash zero two dot two zero two two slash three four and three hold a future briefing to discuss the next steps. Right. Okay. Do we have a seconder, Council McMullen? Any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. And I'll circulate those reports to you as well. Well, we get, yeah, thank you, but we'll get them at the briefing now yeah, too. Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 14.2, creation of permanent water holes. I'd like to move that Council investigate a pilot project to create permanent fishing holes on the Maranoa River and Bungle Creek. Two, list uh, for further consideration of future quarterly budget review to allocate appropriate funding to understand take a feasibility study including consultation with the Gungri and the Mandandji peoples through their respective cultural heritage associations um, and I'd like to put in there associations and um, family uh, family groups as to the viability of creating fishing holes in the nominated waterways. Um, okay, do we have a seconder for that motion? Councillor Burkett, uh, I'll speak to it. Uh, why I put in the family groups is sometimes there's different, not all the families are represented in the cultural heritage associations. So I think it's important to get the buy-in <coughs> from the different families and then it all goes a lot smoothly. So I think that would be an important part. I don't think this is going to be expensive. I think it's more about getting everyone involved. To give you an idea, in Roma, uh, when my father was a uh, boy growing up here, you could go fishing in the Bungle Creek um, and you would uh, catch fish in different water holes. Um, so it's deteriorated since then. It's also also some of the one of the fishing holes is where, for instance, uh, local men and dancy people uh, lived along the fishing hole. Uh, that's I'm sure got some cultural significance. Um, I think this could benefit the whole community if we all work together to be able to create. 
um, what used to be there, um, and that was, um, you know, less than 100 years ago. So, what, you know, it's really uh, working together. Hopefully we get some funding for it and, um, and get everyone to chip in and, and it'll just make it more attractive. We heard uh, yesterday that people were having a picnic down on the Bungle Creek and the same would imagine on the Maranoa and it's just about how do we improve the community by working with our traditional owners as well as local uh, residents. Uh, Councillor O'Neill. Can I just uh, ask if you consider, just in point two, uh, where it's got list for the consideration of the future quarterly budget review to allocate appropriate funding to undertake a feasibility study, including consultation. Would you have, would you um, consider putting, including consultation with, but not limited to, the Gungri and the Men and Angie people. I just note in here that um, other people that are of interest are party of the local fishing association and groups. Yeah, and I understand why you're highlighting the, the indigenous uh, families, but yeah. but I think there are more people too that would be interested in this. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. Also, um, would it would be add in the uh, Balon? What's the one threat there? Well, it's weird. So there's a lot so of ours. Yeah, but yours but is downstream of it. Mm. I'm not laughing at your wheel. I'm not comparing the same wheel. Um, no, just, cool. uh, yeah, look, I think through the intent of the report and the directors here that can talk times. to it, is that it's quite a complex subject matter and it's trying to narrow yeah. um, oh, a oh, pilot just... so that something works um, and then duplicate that process yeah, yeah. out. Yeah, um, Raise, I think that'll, well, you would hope the Gungri people would raise that anyway, wouldn't they? Mm. So, yeah. Well, it's still men and Danji country down there, so. Yeah. At Mitchell? No, no at Surat. Oh, Surat, yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, sorry. So, so right, on. so I've, I've spoken to it, I think. Uh, does anyone else I'm wish happy to speak? With the change. Mr. You're happy with the change? Mm -hmm. uh, does anyone else wish to speak? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. All those against? 7-1, uh, if I can call for a division. Okay, moving on. We might, we've just got a commitment at 10.30. Yeah, that's right. I've right. just done, yeah, through. Okay, yeah. we'll just break got... um, now for half an hour. And we... Council Edwards online. Yes. Yeah. Okay, 14.3, years of agreement, renewal, Mitchell Rotary Club. <clears throat> Councillor Burke. Uh, conflict, Mr Mayor. Uh, on item 14.3, description user agreement renewal Mitchell Rotary Club, declaring council as myself. Person of interest related party is my father, Gary Burke. Particulars of interest, Gary is the president of the Mitchell Rotary Club and they are wanting to renew their lease with council. Type of conflict is declarable and the action I'll take is leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Okay, uh, do we have a mover? Councillor McMullen. <coughs> Mr Mayor, I'll move that Council renew the tenancy arrangement through an exclusive user agreement with the Mitchell Rotary Club for the use of the old Scout Hut building, flagpole and shed located in Louisa Street, Mitchell, for a period of five years until 31st of August 2028 with the option to renew for a further five years. We have a seconder, Councillor uh, Ladbrook. Uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? No, thanks, Mr Mayor. Well, uh, we will go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. 7-0. Seven, zero. Just adjourn the meeting and wait for a couple of counts. Mayor, I'd like to move that <coughs> one, a report be prepared for a future council brief briefing regarding curbing and channeling across the region. Two, a prioritised list of streets, including cost estimates, be developed for each of the directorates. Okay, 
We have a second, and Councillor Taylor. Uh, any opposition? Does <coughs> anyone wish to speak to yeah, it? Mr. Mao, just came about. I had a request from a long-standing resident of Roma. Been living in the house, same house for 51 years, and still hasn't seen any curbing and channeling. So I thought it's timely now that we start looking at some sort of a, a programming, I suppose the word, to start addressing some of these streets and issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I'll speak to it. Um, yeah, no, I think this is a good idea. We've actually done a lot of uh, channel and curbing this year, but uh, I do think it, it would be good if it was more f formalised. We've also got to make sure we're not losing our staff out of those areas that do the channel and curbing. So I think there's got to be a focus from um, the CEO with the staff to make sure we've got enough to do the channel and curbing each year. Um, but breaking it down into the directorates is very good from a point of view of um, not having such an enormous um, uh, problem. So I, I'm certainly going to support this. I think um, it'll flow on from what we have done, um, but I think breaking it down is a great idea. And as we're making savings and operating locally, I think we also can look at um, the uh, channel and curbing and of course also uh, with footpaths as well because I think they are uh, a crucial part and we we can use some of our local builders to do that so I think uh, I'll certainly be supporting this motion. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Does the move wish to sum up? No, thank you. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? <laughs> yes. Eight zero. So through the chair, you do have. Oh no, it's Nelson. One minute late. Um, yes. Is there any late white? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Through the chair, did you? You've got a copy there. Good. Because actually, we don't one, have a copy. One there. item yes. laid on the table. Have we got the information for that out of this? Yeah. Yep. Um, you got an email to us. We have. Okay. Yeah. From the CEO. Mm -hmm. Oh, does anyone do that one where we lay it on the table? Yeah, we can. Then that's finished all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Which of the emails are that? Came through. No. <coughs> uh, 944. A minute oh. while we. Seven, uh, 10.1 uh, reward and recognition program. I've moved something. We laid it on the table to get some information. Um, and. Uh, did we have a seconder? Yeah, I've got a question. Okay. Yeah, please go ahead. Can you just explain how it doesn't enact resolution? Sure, because um, what I'm looking for is at a local level that the director has a barbecue with the staff and gives a uh, shout out on the improvements and productivities. We heard some yesterday. Um, so operationally, what the staff want to do um, through the CEO, that's fine. That's all that can happen. But this is something that, like, none of the internal staff have the families uh, there. This is a barbecue that would happen in each of the local areas. Um, and all I'm saying is that we haven't got that report back about that, and that would be a separate thing that would come back. But that's why I'm confused, Mayor, because on page 91... It says, the intent of a single form location is to enact the years, blah, blah, blah. Further, each area director can, through barbecues or other team events throughout the year, recognise individual teams and include invitations to CEO and councillors to attend. So yeah, that, but it is enacting. Well, it's not because I wanted to report about how we're going to do that, and that's not what we got. It's like the end of a report, and it's about other things that quite within the realms operationally but it's not a report about this one because if it was driven by the staff just bringing forward, we want to do this, that's fine, mm -hmm. but we actually had a motion specifically about um, uh, something that would be driven locally, not, not regionally. Um, so just through the chair for my benefit, in that next report, um, what details do you want in there? Um, well, how we can make the once or twice a year in each area through the local directors. We'd like to get 
their input into it, um, uh, their feedback as far as um, how they would do it. Uh, but they're recommending that, that it, they don't do it. So that they have taken into account and they're providing a report on but how... But it's the manager of procurement, uh, manager of HR that's done the report. That's right, yeah. Because they'd be in charge of the whole thing, so um, and authorised by the director of Beringa. So the yeah, one director, not yeah. So the um, no. So the 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 aim of it is, the aim of the report in front of you is that it's basically saying, recommending that you have an overarching single large event, um, that you could tack in the um, the dual the two events per local area into the same event, but at a lower level, still inviting councillors, et cetera, in relation to that, um, but actually, you know, really make um, the focus of effort a single event in the year. Now, you mightn't agree with that and you've made your own recommendation and the debate can go whichever way you want, but if, um, if the resolution as it currently stands gets up, what I need to understand is um, what do you need to know um, but how are we going to do that is the question and you're going local area director their feedback um, I mean uh, again just for my benefit what does that feedback look like is just describe the event and how they would do it and how they would invite yep. people and stuff like that and some costs attached to that yep. and basically um, so we can approve whether that happens or not and it would be yeah so it's a different different thing yeah um, what you would like to do regionally that's up to yourself and the manager of uh, HR but uh, that's not enacting the, the report um, yes it would be a report about what was asked about um, sure okay okay councillor Guthrie mr. mayor I'm trying to get my head around the the nuances etc and the what's being sought and whether or not it fills fulfills the original resolution can I just ask, is it possible to have a briefing or discussion or to actually tease out so that we're all on the same page? Because I've got to be honest and say I'm just sort of struggling to see what... I'm going to vote, but I'm not sure whether or not... I want my vote to actually be informed. That's what I'm really concerned yeah. Okay, well, you can move the lay it on the table just until we have a briefing. Before that, I think that authorised by Director Bringer, that might have been when he was filling in for... Yeah, that's the right. Yeah. Yeah. Who um, authorised the report, not the author? Yeah, he didn't, not the author. Um, mm -hmm. It does, it is a bit, Mr Mayor, the, the previous one, it is a little bit different again to what you said, so uh, it doesn't really say about the local directors, but I, I, I agree with what you're saying. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy to... But, but, and look, essentially you've got, you've got um, at the moment, a proposed resolution you haven't voted on that's saying that can be debated further. Um, but the premise of the report is saying that from an organisational perspective is, yes, we want a reward and recognition program and um, this is what we'll be doing and this is how we want to do this. Um, it, it's up to council to say, because we know we've got a resolution on the books and we're saying, well, we could easily feed that into this process. Um, if, you don't, if you don't agree with that or whatever, you can... Discuss that further, a briefing, or change the resolution, or <coughs> not adopt the recommendations in the report. Um, you've got all of those options. Councillor Guthrie. Mm -hmm. And I'm not asking. I'm just making a comment and responding to the Madam CEO. And maybe the original resolution was part of the problem because, as I read it, um, it does say including private enterprise contractors, and I can't remember what we actually discussed when we said that. So I'm sure. a, bit, a bit of a loss to actually know whether or not that's embedded in this. So maybe the problem was the wording of the original, because I know what you're intending to do and I don't have an issue with it. Well, like for instance, mm. uh, council contractors are a crucial part in us delivering our projects. And uh, if they've done some great productivity things, they would be a shout out at the barbecue as well. So like we're all one team and it's probably the cheapest thing you could ever do to improve morale in each of the operating areas. So I don't mind if we take it to a briefing. Um, um, I, I think yeah. I will, just because I yep. still don't have my head around it all. <coughs> please go ahead. Mr Mayor, can I um, please re uh, recommend that we lay this on the table until we have a briefing, a briefing or an additional br briefing or 
further unpacking. You're happy to have a briefing about the original concept? Yeah, yeah I, that's, I think that's it's right. Been, it, I'm not trying yep. to rescind the original. I'm just trying to then tease mm. out the original to see how this then melds with it or whether or not it's really hitting the mark or whether it's sort of a bit slanted or whether it's... Sure. I just so, clarifying more than anything. that's not this one. On the pay, I mean, the thing that I've balked at is that, I mean, we're acknowledging the report does not enact a resolution. We end up debating whether it does or not it, it, when, when the substantive thing should be receive and note the report yeah. and further to that, number two, that we undertake yeah. a, an additional brief, a briefing to... Um, uh, flush out further steps required. Because I've noticed, uh, CEO, that this is prop... These are coming more regularly, acknowledging this does enact... Historically, we haven't had those. Oh, look, and, and look, through the chair, because there was, there was a backlog, we were really trying to make it easy yeah. to find that we're actually starting to do things and um, recognising that we were, in, in essence, putting a marker into the resolution for us to quickly say, look, have we dealt with that properly for <coughs> you, you know? Um, because there were still parts of resolutions where they'd been largely enacted, but there were bits and pieces that hadn't been. So we're really trying to get on top of that. Because if you do receive a note and then undertake, you're actually advancing the issue rather than mm. kicking it down the road to look yep. at this same and, and if you thing. don't agree with the recommend the resolution as it stands and you amend it um, or you, you propose a, a different um, resolution you can do that you can take it out if you yeah. don't think it enacts it um, you can put a more relevant did we have a move and second originally yeah. um, no I think well, it was just the, no yeah. there yeah. hadn't Tyson been the, the mayor had put up a so we'll keep going with the meeting um, and councillor Guthrie you've got a declaration Nakia, did you want to... Yeah, thank you, my dear. Um, Mr Mayor, I have a conflict for LC3, Supplementary Rates Notice Process. The declaring councillor is myself, Councillor Julie Guthrie. The person with the interest is myself, Julie Guthrie, my husband, Ross Guthrie, and my son, Nick Guthrie, who are equal partners in Guthrie Pastoral Group. The particulars of the interest is that Guthrie Pastoral Group submitted a review of rate assessment requesting a concession due to loss of capping on a supplementary rate notice at the ordinary meeting on the 23rd of November 2022. The type of conflict is a declarable conflict of interest and the action is that I'll leave the room while the matter is discussed and voted on. Okay, any other conflicts? Okay, do we have someone to go into closed? No. Councillor McMullen. Mr. Mayor, I'll move that in, in accordance with the provisions of section 254J3 of the Local Government Regulation 2012. The Council resolved to close the meeting to the public to discuss confidential items that its councillors consider as necessary to close the meeting. In accordance with section 254J5 of the Local Government Regulation 2012, the following table provides the matters to be discussed and an overview of what is to be discussed while the meeting is closed. One, Roma. Denise Spencer Pool Community Consultation and Design Update. Two, Headache Hill Quarry. Three, Disposal of Land Newbond Street, Roma. Four, Request for Fee Waiver, Roma Airport. Five, C5, APLNG Livability Grants Round 2, 2022 23. Uh, C6, Overdue Rates, commencement of, commencement of Legal Action. C7, Expressions of Interest. Audit Committee Member, LC1 Visual, LC1 Visit Ro Rural Micro Tourism Initiative for the Maranoa Region, LC2 Tender Consideration Plan Beringa Action Group and Great Artesian Spa Beringa, LC3 Ratepayer Supplementary Notice Process. Processes. Yeah. Okay, we have a seconder, Councillor Burkett. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in close. Uh, Ruben. C one. Roma Denise Spencer Pool Community Consultation. L one or C one. Uh, C one. We're not doing these. No, no. We'll do uh, the close first, and we'll come back to them. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Councillor O'Neill. I move that Council 1 adopt the current draft design for the Roma Denise Spencer Pool Redevelopment Project and 2 undertake broad community consultation on the draft design, including shade options 1 and split sale options 2 and 3, in line with the community engagement framework for the Roma Denise Spencer Pool Redevelopment Design Project as previously adopted by Council Resolution Number. Owen 04202314. Councillor O'Neill, are you in favour of putting in that motion the cost of expected cost of the projects in the consultation? Is that not already in the community engagement framework? Uh, but are you happy for it to be in there if it's not? Yeah. Okay. Righto. Uh, well, well, we just can't say that then. So, um, uh, three, please. Uh, include um, uh, projected estimated costs associated with this uh, project as part of the consultation. Okay, do we have a seconder? Councillor Burkett, any opposition? Does the move wish to speak to the motion? Uh, just to say, Mr Mayor, that we've already adopted the, the community engagement in recent weeks. We've now got the design. Um, um, some key stakeholders have already had it an opportunity to have some input into uh, the design. Obviously, councillors themselves uh, have been across this. This is an exciting um, you know, uh, uh, project for our community. It's a generational project that will set our region up with um, uh, not only a 50 metre redeveloped pool, but a 25 metre pool. Uh, there's a water slide included in this and a proper kids play area. Um, we want uh, the feedback uh, to come uh, uh, to us um, as, a, as a council to ensure that we are going to get this right. Uh, and uh, I look forward to participating in the consultation as I'm sure uh, all councillors uh, in the room uh, and uh, with Councillor Hancock being away, those away, um, uh, so that we can hear firsthand from the, the users of our facility um, as to what they want for, for the next generation of, our, of the Roma pool. Uh, do we have uh, someone else that wish to speak uh, for or against the motion? Okay, um, uh, I'll speak. Uh, I'm very glad that the costing of the project is going out and I think it's very important for the feedback of the community is to actually get their feedback on the design. So um, I'll be looking forward to the consultation coming back. Mm -hmm. Councillor Burkett. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, just also, I'd just like to acknowledge the staff, uh, Deputy Director Cam Hoffman, and, and also the, uh, the facility design group. It's pretty um, amazing work, and we've it's been reconfigured a couple of times due to uh, sourcing more area, I suppose, but I think it's uh, very exciting. And it, like Councillor O'Neill said, it's listed all the, the aspects of it. It ticks all the boxes that the community wanted, and I just look forward to hearing the um, final outcome and pushing forward. Thank you. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Does the mover wish to sum up? Um, yeah, thanks, Mr Mayor, um, and thanks, Councillor Burkett. It was remiss of me not to acknowledge the staff. Both Cam and Lucy and, and our other officers have done a power of work to get to this particular point. Um, um, whilst I've included the estimated costs as part of this resolution, I'm pretty confident it was part of the community engagement framework, but nonetheless, um, it is important uh, to be open and transparent with our community uh, that um, a project of this size will come with a considerable price tag uh, and that should be uh, acknowledged and form part of the broader consultation so um, people know exactly uh, what will need to be invested in this. And we've already had strong debate in this chamber and, and uh, majority support to apply uh, under the latest round of Commonwealth support uh, for at least 50% uh, of, uh, of this um, project, uh, which, um, um, you know, fingers crossed and everything crossed that we're successful in, in those endeavours. Um, but, um, yeah, again, uh, welcome the feedback from our community on, on what will be, uh, a, you know, once in a generation or two um, project and investment for our broader community. Okay, uh, so we're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Uh, eight zero. C two headache hill quarry. Do we have a mover? 
Councillor Guthrie. I'd like to move that Council 1 receive and note the report. 2 endorse the development of a business case for an, an amount of seven uh, sorry, 71000 funded from Rome Macquarie Operational 2324 budget in relation to future business opportunities. And 3 submit the results of the business case opportunities for consideration by Council at a future meeting. Do we have a seconder? Councillor uh, Ladbrook, any, any of uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? Please go ahead. I'd just like to say that we we are those of us who live up in, in the Indian area know about Headache Hill, and it's just really great to be able to see that it returns back um, to be used and and the resources to be applied to um, to future road making and also other other um, endeavours. Okay. Does anyone else wish to speak? Then we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Page zero. Uh, page 57. Page 57, C3, Disposal of Land, New Bond Street, Roma. Councillor McMullen. The Mayor, I'd like to move that. <coughs> Jeff. Try this one. That's me. Yeah. Council one, yeah, invite expressions of interest for the sale of lot one on the corner of Edward Street South and New Bond Street, Roma. Land size 4.723 hectares into re residential housing lots. And A, that the land must be subdivided into a minimum number of 30 residential lots. And two, the buyer or subsequent buyers must complete. Uh, I'll just leave it that subdivide into a minimum of 30 residential lots. Number two. In, uh, in interested parties must provide a business capability statement as part of the, part of this process. Did you mean that as two, Jeff? As in one you've said, and then we got a, we've got a one in it. Oh, yeah, oh well, just now we sure because you never said N two. No, sorry, N two interested parties. Yeah. Okay. Do we have a seconder for that motion, Councillor O'Neill? Uh, does the move wish to speak to the motion? <clears throat> oh, Mr. Mayor, I think now that we've subdiv or been the finalised the subdivision on this land, I think it's a good time to go out to the market, test the market. Um, you know, we, we, we are aware that there are other blocks of land for sale, but um, hopefully there's an investor out there who would like to purchase this land and um, finish, uh, go ahead and, and develop it. Okay. Um, does anyone else wish to speak? Uh, I'll speak. I'm certainly happy to. I'm, I'm actually not in favour of council disposing of all of its uh, residential land. I think council should think uh, much more in the future. But I do like the idea of um, being able to find someone to develop it, and then the next stage is building houses on it. So I will be supporting this motion today. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Does the move wish to sum up? No, thanks, Mr. Mayor. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Uh, that's 8 0. 66 clickety clicks. Uh, C4, request for fee waiver, Roma Airport. Do we have a mover? Councillor Ladbrook. Um, <coughs> I'd like to move the council approve a one of fee waiver for the initial um, application of existing Maranoa travel staff for a authority to drive air, air, air ride, is it? Air side. Air side. Air side. B, or authorise to use air side and C, air side access. Again, B was authority to use. Authority to use air side, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just note that you that um, you might want to include the inclusion of word <coughs> just whether the, the mover. Yes. So on, so on one, the there's for a twelve month so period. Do you, want, added. do you want me to read that again? Yeah. Yeah, if you want to do the first line. Yep. Um, I'd like to move that council approve a one off free fee waiver for the twelve month period for the initial applications 
existing existing Maranoa travel staff staff for, for a um, authority to drive to, to drive Oz air wide yes. b authority to use um, air air side is it that's mm -hmm. right yep. and c air side access uh, Makita, would you mind stretching it out? We can stretch it out a bit bigger, a bit wider, um, and then the wording gets bigger. Oh, yeah, that's, that's good. Yeah, that's Some good. of us old fellas haven't got real mm. good eyes. Okay, so, yeah. um, right, I'll second that. Uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Uh, eight, zero. C5, APLNG, Livability Grants, Round 2 on 2022-23. Councillor Burke. I've got a conflict with the Mayor. Please go uh, ahead. Item C5, description is L APLNG, Livability Grants, Round 2, 2022-23. Declaring council as myself, person with the interest or related party is my father, Gary Burkett. Particulars in, of interest, Gary is executive committee member of the Bringer Heritage Group and they are recipient of a grant in this report. Type of conflict's declarable, and I will leave the room while the matter's discussed and voted on. Okay, do we have a mover? Councillor McMullen. Mr Mayor, I'll move that <coughs> Council 1 endorse the recommendations of the assessment panel by approving the following applications for payment. Roma Lapidary and Mineral Society, a pleasant for the project, a pleasant climate, <coughs> climate, $9,463.30. Maranoa Netball Association, coaching and umpiring development courses, $3,950. Apex Roma, Apex, Apex Park Swing, $25,000. Amby Progress Association, Amby Hall Air Conditioning, $8,900. Mitchell Amateur Swimming, Dolphin Synchro Stop Start Timing System, $8,839.60. Mangalala Progress Association, Connecting the Community, $7,363.62. Baringa Heritage Group, Museum Website, $2,018.50. Wallambella Town Improvement Group, Pool Blanket, $13,933. Wallambilla Agricultural and Pastoral Association. Wallambilla Showground Seating Upgrade, $15,950.20. Injune Bowls Club. Injune Bowls Club Kitchen Upgrade, $5,748. Begonia Golf and Sports Club. Oven and Range Hood Upgrade, $6,803. Indian Rodeo Association, installation of shade sale footings, partially funded at $15,000, a total of $122,969.22. And two, council write to these unsuccessful applicants providing feedback. <coughs> Do we have a seconder? Councillor Taylor, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? Uh, Mr Mayor, I'd just like to say once again, uh, the second round of the April and G livability grants was well um, well subscribed. Uh, we did have to uh, short short shorten the list a little bit, but I think we got wasn't too many that didn't make it this time. But anyway, thanks. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak, Councillor Taylor? Uh, I'd just like to say that as well. I think. We, um, I think it, w it was just a real pleasure, really. It's just there's so many good clubs out there trying so hard to be as self-sufficient as they possibly can and they just need a little bit of help. So hopefully, and as, as a, this is livabil livability, um, it goes a long way to that. Especially, uh, I'd like to just point out the Apex Park one, the, the park swing, because it will be for a... Um, what is it, Jeff? A... Um, the Apex Park yeah, Swing. Yeah, I'm just trying to think what um, all, all disability. No, disability. Yeah, 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 that's the word, yeah. 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 It, it'll actually fit a wheelchair. In wheelchair, it. actually. Yeah, the so swing. Yeah. 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 But it's like a, a funny thing. But it looked, yeah. Anyway, hmm. it was really good. And the girls are really good and, 
And um, yeah, we had a good day of it, so that's good. Thank you. Um, okay, yeah, I'll speak to that. I yeah, I see a lot of um, different groups, and it was great to see a mix across the region. It's obviously disappointing for the people that missed out, but. I hope that there is a way that um, they can be accommodating in future other things that happen as far as grants that are available um, for non-for-profits and community groups. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Does the mover wish to sum up? No, no, thanks, Mr. Mayor. We'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Okay, uh, seven zero six. <coughs> Six zero. Oh no, seven. Sorry, seven. Seven zero. Yeah, one out, two out, yeah, two, two out. out on the day. Yeah. Page seventy-eight. We um, will just adjourn for a minute. Did we get to C6, page 78? Page 78, C6, overdue rates, commencement of legal action. Councillor O'Neill. I'll move in accordance with councils adopted. Um, oh, it's changed. Uh, I'll move that council endorse the next step in the rates recovery process that is to proceed to filing a statement of liquidated claim with the local magistrates, magistrates court after the 12th of July 2023, serving upon the ratepayers who have one, not paid the outstanding rates, two, not entered into an appropriate payment arrangement, and or three, not complied with an appropriate payment arrangement. Okay, uh, Councillor Ladbrook, are you seconding that? Yes. Okay, uh, does anyone wish to speak to the motion? And we're going to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Eight zero. Okay, LC one. <clears throat> uh, visit rural micro tourism initiative for the Marina region. Councillor Burkett. I'd like to move to Council one acknowledge resolution OM slash three oh zero three dot two thousand and twenty one slash seventy five. Two endorses the promotion of the Roma region via the Visit Rural website at no cost to Marino Regional Council apart from any ticket sales commission. Three endorse at any ticket sales booked through the Visit Rural website of council owned tourism products such as the Big Rig Night Show. Marino Regional Council will pay a booking fee. Four note that the operations will establish a separate line item in the budget to track these sales for future discussions and potentially other opportunities. Five endorse Vital Rural Visit Rural referring to the Marino Regional Council as a foundation member, and this be used in ongoing marketing and promotions. We have a second, Councillor Guthrie. Uh, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak to it? Can we go into the vote? All Michael. those, please go ahead. Um, I'll speak to this, uh, and in doing so, I'll acknowledge uh, our manager of regional economic development uh, and community development, uh, Greg, for the work that he did uh, in um, negotiating what has turned out, in my view, um, to be a fair deal uh, for our um, community. Um, I uh, ha wasn't going to support this when it initially came uh, to the table, uh, but I'm pleased that it did um, uh, lay on the table and the work in the background uh, has occurred. Um, I, I think there is a benefit here to us now in selling uh, the tourism assets that are under the remit uh, of council uh, and um, the the deal around the commission is a good one um, and uh, I think it's important to stress in the re in um, uh, point two of the resolution that we enter into this deal at no cost uh, to council and therefore no cost to uh, our community members but uh, if this is a success then the assets of council the tourism assets of council uh, will be successful uh, and so therefore our community will get a success out of this as well. And so, um, uh, again, congratulations to our manager for negotiating this deal. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Councillor McMullen. Uh, Mr Mel, pretty well on the same lines as Councillor O'Neill. I wouldn't have supported it had we still been asked to pay that large sum of money initially that we were asked to pay for, but on the, on the uh, current terms, uh, commission only, I'm more than happy to support it.
Um, yeah, okay, I'll speak to the motion. Uh, I don't believe it was a large sum of money, the original uh, thing. It, this was always meant to work on a basis of um, uh, commission basis. Uh, one of the things is if we know anything about the new world online, there is no place for it as far as booking experience, low cost experiences in the outback uh, in our towns. We don't have anyone. We have, council has funded in the past, um, um, which has benefit individual businesses significantly, but we've never done anything on a large scale. So the proponents of this are actually looking at opening up to visit rural to the actual visitors to come and be able to book experiences um, that locals will have. So I'll certainly support it. Um, there was uh, no large fee that was going to be up front, I think, compared to what I've seen councils spend in subsidising tourism. Um, I think that this is, was always a very small amount of money. Um, now, uh, I think the proponents have gone to such a stage they're not even looking for any money to do it. Uh, and I don't know of any other online uh, booking uh, forums that um, just uh, clip the ticket and will actually just advertise um, for people coming here from capital cities, maybe even overseas, where they can book grassroots experiences. So I wish the operators well and I'll certainly supporting this initiative um, because we don't have another option that I know about at this micro level in, uh, in outback uh, Queensland. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Or Council of Burke? Well, or some of even though I didn't start, but um, I'd just also like to acknowledge uh, uh, Manager Greg, the Regional Economic Community Development uh, Manager, uh, for getting this over the line, but also you, Mr Mayor, this was your idea to start with, so I'm glad it's finally come to fruition, but um, yeah, I, it was a bit, um, it's a lot different now that we don't have to pay any that upright money. I'm looking forward to seeing it um, get rolled out. So I wish them all the best as well. Okay, on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Uh, eight zero. Okay, moving on to LC2, Tender Consideration Plan, Baringa Action Group and Great Artesian Spa Baringa. Do we have a mover? Mr Mayor, I'd like to move that Council 1 acknowledge resolution number OM-11.2022-34 to invite in, invite by tender a 5 by 5 year management agreement contract for suitably qualified applicants for the management of the Great Artesian Spa 2 Cambridge Street, Mitchell. At the end of it. Um, should we put in there that if terms are acceptable? Um, After how the other one is? That'll come it? back to us. Back, yeah. 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 I'll second that. Okay, we have a second. And does the move wish to speak to the motion? Uh, Mr Mayor, I, <coughs> I think a five by five year lease will give the successful applicants some, some certainty about the length of their um, uh, Tenure. tender process. So if they wish to spend any money or do any uh, upgrade, it'll give them some certainty there for sure. Um, just through the chair, I'm just uh, recalling something in in the report itself. Is do we need to include, along with the management agreement contract, the Explore Centre accreditation? Because I'm just thinking, is that. that a separate thing or is that part of what the management? What was that? Sorry, the Explore Centre accreditation. What centre? I think that is that the Big Eye. They've already got that. Yes. Yeah, but we can't. Um, do we, we need to include that? We. Do we include it in uh, as a separate? Management agreement contract plus centre accreditation. Yeah, because yeah, if we're going out to this, that'd have to be yep. included because the and previous the, leasee's got it. And we're going out, so we have to say. So that doesn't continue in with the bill. Well, if we don't have, say, for argument's sake, the current leasee doesn't get this. Yeah, but the accreditation's still there, isn't it? No, but it's That's to that right. entity. Oh, okay, right. Okay. Right. okay. Well, Am I right in saying sorry, that? Yeah. What <coughs> council are inviting is that. That someone manages it, but they also maintain the accreditation. Yeah. yeah. So yep. Otherwise, that's otherwise off that. Okay. Yep. Uh, Just pick two. that up. In, thank you for that. Point three. 
Is it Betty? No, she just has it. Hang on. Oh, sorry. Invite by tender. A five by five year management agreement contract plus centre accreditation. It's explore centre accreditation. And oh, sorry, explore centre accreditation for suitably qualifi qualified applicants for the management of the Great Artesian Spa, two Cambridge Street, Mitchell. Okay, it's a second. I have you said. Okay. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak against the motion? I'll speak against the motion. Uh, I'm very disappointed that. Um, after we, we were briefed by Bringer Action Group that has delivered over and above what they promised with the SPA um, that uh, we didn't um, go for uh, a tender consideration plan. Uh, in fact, we, I believe, spent money on the legal advice, I would imagine, and we are in a situation that they have over-delivered de over they have also wanting to put a plan of uh, what they would do and want to invest in our own facility, whereas uh, the feedback I get from residents is council doesn't look after its own facilities and do the maintenance. Um, so this is a situation where this would happen. That was the request from Bringer Action Group. Um, with the amount of employ employment that it is creating and also Bringer Action Group keeping to its uh, uh, benefits even when they were, I believe, um, uh, not operating at a profit, um, I would um, definitely uh, not be supporting going out when the general market uh, is not there. And I am definitely disappointed if this motion gets up. And what I would like to say to Bringer Action Group is that uh, I fully support um, what Bringer Action Group were doing and I fully support the request that they had, um, which is not this motion. Okay, does uh, someone wish to go and speak for the motion? Please go ahead. I'll speak for the motion. Um, by no means... Uh, um, of my uh, seconding of this resolution uh, should the Beringa Action Group um, uh, glean any other view that I think that the work that they've done over the course of the tenure that they've had at the Mitchell Spa uh, um, hasn't been anything but great. I think the, the work that they've done, the vision that they've got, uh, the commitment that they've um, had to, to grow uh, the business um, uh, is reflected in... Uh, the reputation that that particular tourism asset has uh, for um, for our region and in particular um, the the Mitchell community um, going out to tender is uh, a open and transparent <coughs> process uh, and uh, whilst uh, the tender consideration plan that the mayor has referenced uh, is entirely legal um, I personally don't think it passes the pub test uh, and uh, I think by going out to, to uh, tender uh, and encouraging very strongly um, uh, that uh, parties that are interested, and I'm sure the Bringer Action Group uh, will be interested in submitting a tender, um, will see a um, uh, you know strong applications for council consider in the management of this particular asset for our community. So um, I, I think it's unfair to suggest that this is anything but. Um, um, uh, indicating support to the Bringer Action Group. Um, what it is doing is ensuring that this is an open and transparent tender process for an asset that's owned by our community. Okay, does someone wish to speak against the motion or for the motion? I'll speak against there, Mr. Please, Please go ahead. Um, I'd just like to say, um, business-wise, I think um, Bringer Action Group should be congratulated on their job that they've done and um, they shouldn't have to go through this process. They've done a good job um, with what they've done with the spa. Um, I think this is, um, I don't know, time wasting really because, um, you know, council takes that long to get stuff through and we just keep stalling on things. I think there's no point in it. Okay, does someone wish to speak for the motion? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I, I do, I agree. Uh, Bringer Action Group are the best people for the job and they've done an exemplary job, but we need to be transparent. On the current climate with things that have gone in the past, 
I think this is the right way to go. And and uh, the officers have spoken to uh, Bringer Action Group and they're fine if it has to go this way. Um, I think it's they've also said the same pro it's similar process it's time wise, so I don't think it's gonna hold it up. But I do think we've got to be, you know, tread carefully with that and moving forward so we are transparent. But I think they've done a great job and they'll continue to do a great job if they do get the, the new uh, contract. Can I ask CEO, is it the same time process if the tender consideration plan was approved today? Is it the same time process as going out to tender? Um, look, through the chair, uh, it, it will be longer to go out to tender simply because council have got to come back and make a decision. Um, essentially, um, to g have a suitably qualified a um, applicant already lined up under a tender consideration plan is streamlined. The only issue is that if that wasn't to council's satisfaction, you could then have to subsequently... It probably Go wasn't time. I probably process. should have said work-wise. How long is it? So look, um, you're probably to looking two, two, to four, two to four weeks maximum. I should think maximum. A, a council decision process. We're still within is the that difference lot of time. is that you um, instead of um, working up to an agreed contract, you're actually going through um, a, a statutory period of notice, four weeks, and um, then a subsequent decision, which could be as quick as two weeks. After that, so, so it's, it's probably tenders, yep, six weeks. It's yep. Not. So, yeah. so you're, you're probably tenders, looking at another four weeks. a month weeks. out there or six weeks. Yeah, you're looking at another month. And then it'll come to a month. meeting. I should imagine. Yeah. Can, just to clarify, but seventh yep. of October is the That's the right. time. So we're not push the time. We've got a bit of time. Mm. Okay. Does someone wish to speak uh, against the motion or for the motion? I'll talk against it. I'll, Please I'll, go ahead. Yeah, I'll, I'll be. Um, I'll be voting against the motion uh, just based on the debate today. I'm not going to go into any more detail, but uh, uh, yeah, I'll be uh, I'll be definitely voting against this. Okay. Uh, does someone wish to speak uh, for the motion? Councillor Taylor. Oh, I haven't got much more to say that the other councillors haven't, but there is a process and I'm just pleased that we follow the process for transparency and, and we're open and it's honest and this is what would normally happen. So let's just do what normally happens and put it out there for tender. And I too agree that it's been run very, very well by BAG and I'm sure they'll put in for the tender so it'll be an equal playing field. Okay, does anyone wish to speak against the motion or for the motion? Please go ahead. Um. I'm just going to agree with a lot of what has been said. I think Bring Action Group have done an outstanding job with what they have been doing with the Great Artesian Spa. I'm very confident that they will put in a submission for this tender. I think they'll do their homework and they'll put their, their tender in and I am very, very hopeful that whoever receives it um, will be the best group to actually manage the spa. Okay. Um, does the move wish to sum up? Yeah, Mr. Bird, just a couple of quick things. Um, I definitely agree with this, obviously, because I moved it. Um, I have the great, greatest confidence in uh, Bringer Action Group. Uh, they've done a good job. I would also like to remind councillors, there's probably only three of us left here from the last term, Mr Mayor, but when this tender went out originally, uh, we approved this tender against the officer's recommendation, the original tender, and the six of us that voted for it were reported to the Office of Independent Assessor. It was thrown out. But we were reported, so I think if we went the other way, there's a fairly good chance we might have copped another visit to the OIA. Okay, on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? All those against? Against. Uh, five three, if I can call for a division. Okay, moving on. Oh. Three. Uh, two, it's the, yep, the, the X one, yep. Well, that's in the white part. Yeah, yeah, it was. It's supposed to be pink, but it's white. Yeah. LC3, ratepayer supplementary notice process. Mr Mayor? Yes. I have a conflict. I'd like to move that one, or oh, Councillor Guthrie has left the room. I'd like to move that one, uh, that Council one adopt a policy position of a full concession, like for like, on the general rate 
increase for the 2023-24 financial year for ratepayers that receive a supplementary rate notice due to property amalgamation and or change in tenure resulting in loss of capping. To provide a concession to be equal to a full concession to ratepayers who have already applied for a percentage concession for the current council term 2020 to 2024 to bring the general rate increase back to a true capped charge equivalent to the previous year or pro rata rate if relevant. Three, request a, a full report be provided at a future council meeting so council can understand the financial impact. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Burkett, any opposition? Does anyone wish to speak? I'll speak to it. I believe that we started off with uh, different percentages and they were all about trying to basically take people back to as if they had not lost their, um, their been amalgamated or lost their um, capping. And I believe as we've gone along in this term, it's got further and further from that with some of the ones that we've got. And this will tidy it up to give uh, people um, the ability to um, pay as if they did not uh, lose their history through uh, um, supplementary notices or all of the issues that are caused um, when the values department gives you a new valuation. Okay, does anyone wish to speak against the motion or for the motion? Yep. Councillor O'Neill. I'm going to speak um, for it um, with some um, hesitation. Uh, and my hesitation uh, is centred around that we're in the predicament that we are because uh, there's capping in place in our council. Uh, and there are uh, actions being undertaken uh, by... Uh, the state government uh, where amalgamations are occurring uh, on pass rural parcels of land unbeknownst um, uh, initially to the landowners uh, and certainly the uh, implications that occur when those amalgamations happen because of the loss of capping. Um, and, and I think there is a much bigger issue that we need to deal with in relation to that. Having said that, um, I, I do think that this is the right approach uh, that it is a uh, defined figure that is applied <laughs> to, to everyone. Um, and um, uh, I uh, welcome point three, which will um, uh, see the data come back to council with what the financial implications will be for us to further consider. Um, uh, but um, on uh, the basis uh, that there will be a fair and level playing field for people that are impacted uh, by, um, uh, you know, the loss of capping. I'm going to support this today. Okay. Does anyone else wish to speak for or against the motion? Then we'll go to the. I'll say something. I'll no, say something. Uh, well, Councillor yeah. uh, Edwards and then McMullen. Yeah, I'd just like to say that it's been impacted on us as councillors or, or on the council. Um, to deal with this, uh, I, I think we're doing the best, uh, you know, the best we can in the circumstances. Um, and just, uh, just on, uh, you, you know, it's a pretty, uh, you know, for for the gen, you know, generally it's pretty hard to fathom, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff to do with the rates. But, um, you know, having said that. Uh, it's um, it's something that you know, as I said, you know, we're uh, dealing with, and uh, you know, we're doing the best you know that we possibly can. And I just want uh, just want the, uh, the public to, you know, understand that we've been put you know put in a position as the uh, mayor said. I endorse what he said uh, about the um, you know the uh, uh, you know the valuations or whatever you, you know. And I think we're doing the best thing we can, and. Uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is historical. It, it goes back, and uh, you know that's the capping I'm talking about. And uh, unfortunately, now, as I said, we've got to deal with it. But I still believe that um, you know capping is a is a very useful tool, and uh, and uh, you know it's um, you know I would say capping uh, in in the circumstance it, well in most circumstances is uh, is our friend. You know, it's something that we can, 
yeah, rely on. Okay, thank you. Okay, does uh, Council McMahon? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, I'll be. Well, I will be supporting this motion. I'm supporting it to actually help our ratepayers. I'm very disappointed that we were given the opportunity two budgets ago to start rectifying these problems with the the capping and all that, but have, we haven't got it up yet. So we will see these these same similar types of issues continue on until we start the, or finish removing, start removing capping and get rid of capping altogether. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak? Uh, then uh, I'll sum up. I'm actually a supporter of capping. I believe it stops ratepayers having large rate increases. Uh, I would much rather more consistency in valuations and then um, our cents in the dollar would do the job and you wouldn't need capping. But I'm a big supporter of capping, stopping large rate increases. And anyone that says that they can remove capping and not have large rate increases spiking because of valuations, even if the, uh, it might be mitigated by different categories, but it will still be large rate increases <laughs> above CPI. Okay, and on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Okay, so seven zero. We must have them all, have we? No, no, we've got a couple of open ones. Yeah. Well, only late open. Yeah, late open. Okay, uh, L1, local area budgets forecast, 28th of the 6th, 2023. I'd like to move a repair, uh, report be prepared for an upcoming council meeting. Do we have a seconder? Have a question? Yeah, Council Ladbrook seconds it. Please go ahead. I'd just like to know why you want this report. Uh, I'm going to talk to it in a minute, um, so I'll probably leave it till I speak to it, okay. and that will probably give you the answer. Right Okay, um, okay, I'll speak to the motion. Um, I think it was misleading what was said in a budget, special budget meeting about uh, how um, uh, a councillor said that it was uh, budgets were over. I believe that that's misleading if you don't give all of the information. So this report is about getting all of the local area budgets and having a look whether they're all over. Uh, and I think it's misleading only putting some of the information. And I don't think it's open and transparent and I think this report is. Okay, does someone wish to speak against the motion? Please go ahead, Councillor Taylor. Um, it was me that made that statement, I, I get that. And I actually will apologise for the fact that I didn't know that it was in confidential. I actually had that information in my pigeonhole after I came back from being having a leave of absence. So I just assumed that when we'd asked um, a little while back for a breakdown of materials and services, I just assumed that was it. Um, so for that, I apologise. I don't apologise, though, for being transparent and open. And I just don't wonder why these figures would have been confidential if now you're going to put them out there anyway. So. Um, I, I just feel that uh, now you're doing it to make out that my figures were wrong and they actually weren't wrong on the day. Uh, what comes up after that, um, we'll, we'll, we'll see what it is. But I just feel that um, you are now allowed to ask for them to come out and you're sort of blaming me for saying something that you don't believe is true, which is not. I have the figures. I quoted the figure with the aerial directors. Um, believing that they weren't confidential, and so I just, I just feel now that it's one rule for one and one rule for another. Okay. Does someone else wish to speak for the motion or against the motion, Councillor O'Neill? I'm again reluctant to speak against it because what you're doing is is bringing uh, figures out into the open, um, and I uh, fully support open and transparent decisions uh, and information to our community. I always have. Um, what concerns me, though, uh, is that uh, this is a target, uh, a targeted effort of one particular councillor. And whilst you didn't name Councillor Taylor, it is Councillor Taylor that has driven you to bring this report. 
you didn't need to put the preamble in there uh, that um, uh, talks about it being discussed at um, a, a previous uh, budget meeting. You didn't need to do that. If you felt that it was appropriate to bring this out into the open, you simply, simply should have moved a report as such. Um, uh, you know, the last time I looked, the, the code of conduct was we are um, to treat our fellow councillors with respect, and I question whether you've actually shown the respect to Councillor Taylor, uh, and without having asked her, um, had you discussed this with her since the budget meeting? Um, and, and I suspect the answer's not. And so whilst I really want to vote for this because you're bringing information out into the public arena, which whether there's overs or unders, I think it's important that our community uh, is aware of that, I won't be voting um, in support of this today because of the approach that you've taken in, um, you know, your, uh, uh, um, what looks to be a fairly targeted attack on Councillor Taylor. Uh, does someone wish to speak uh, for the motion? or against the motion, then I'll sum up. Um, uh, actually, uh, Councillor O'Neill, I think you're the only one that's been uh, done a targeted um, uh, approach or whatever you said, because I never mentioned the councillor. Um, so I believe that um, if you need to be respectful to councillors, uh, that will be your decision on what you do but I never brought the councillor up, what um, councillor's name. What I'm really interested in misleading information where only some of the information came to the table that day. So what I would like to do is correct the record by getting all of the high level information from the budgets and then um, that can be uh, debated in the chamber and it will be all of the information, not some of the information. And on that note, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. All those against? 6-2 uh, if I can call for a division. Uh, L2, road safety upgrades for intersections. I'd like to move that council advocate for intersection safety improvements such as expanding shoulders or adding additional space for turning vehicles at key state controlled intersections that are in need of long term upgrades. Two, also write to the regional representative of DTMR, Roma, requesting that these interim safety improvements could be considered for implementation as part of current and future budgets. Do we have a second? Councillor McMullen. I'll, I'd like to speak to this. What this is about is um, obviously we have been advocating uh, for turning lanes. We have some very busy highways that uh, we constantly get told about um, people having to pull off the road and they've got uh, trucks up their backsides and so forth. Um, one of the uh, suggestions is by taking the gravel out, even if the turning upgrade might be 10 years away, take the gravel out and, the, and if the gravel goes out, the um, guideposts move out, people can just pull off the road and be safe till all the traffic goes past. So, it could be a way to save some lives in the interim till we get some of these long-term upgrades that seem to take a long time to come through through the normal uh, planning and then delivery process of DTMR. Okay, does anyone else wish to speak uh, against or for this motion? Uh, Councillor Guthrie. Mr Mayor, I'm just going to... Um, uh, um, say that what you have said is, is correct. There's been a number of... Um, our local area groups that have advocated long and hard for particular parts of the highway where their town is. But from a whole regional point of view, there's a lot of other locations that I, I do a lot of driving and I go, this is a dangerous spot. So I think if we can advocate for this, we're trying to save people's lives, we're trying to improve the highway conditions, etc. And if you don't actually advocate, um, you're basically missing a great opportunity to really promote Lots of lots of safety um, considerations that can be then advanced. Okay. Uh, does anyone else wish to speak? Then we're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. Uh, eight zero. Any um, further business, councillors? I'm um, just through the chair. Would you mind if we just check the tape? Just on the previous report, I, we just didn't record a seconder, and I just which one's that? The, in relation to the local area budgets forecast Council report. Council Ladrill. 
Uh, okay, I, thank I you very much I for that. Wrote it down. Okay, is there any further business, councillors? Mm -hmm. very, very okay, we'll close the meeting at 4 3 p uh, 4 03 p.m. and thank you for your attendance. Councillor Ladbrook.